shepherd I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table in thy presence. Love my enemies. <laughs> Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. psalm. If you break it down, the Lord is my shepherd. It's about my relationship. My relationship with the law. With what is. But the, the shepherd, what, what, what the author of this is comparing himself to a sheep. And sheep are not the brightest. <laughs> sheep are pretty dense. And it takes a lot to get through to the sheep. And so Otherwise, why would we have to keep coming here? Why would we have to keep picking up another book and keep praying and everything? Like, you know, otherwise, we, we could just do it once and we're free. It doesn't seem to work that way, does it? I need to be reminded. I remember one time I thought, oh, Lord, how many times do I have to hear this? And it hit me as many times as I need to. And I was set free with that thought. Fine, as many times as I need to. He said, a bad message. It's not like somebody's coming up and kicking me. It's like, why don't you get this? They're just repeating it over and over and over again. And if, I don't know if you know Ed Townley here. He, 
Ed is the minister of the University of Hartford. And, you know, Ed has been a minister for many, many, many years. And, uh, you know, we have to keep finding a way to say the same thing week after week after week. Not just to you, but to ourselves. There has been many a time when I've needed the CD of the talk after Sunday morning. Because the message, I, when I, well, I thought it was for somebody else who didn't show up that day. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, and then it turned out it was for me. But, so it, evidently, I am the dense sheep who needs to hear this stuff. And, uh, it doesn't make me stupid. It's just a little thick. There, there's a lot of fur to get through. Uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of wool. <laughs> I, I watched an old game show. Uh, the CD or DVD recently, and they, they had a Family Feud thing on it. It says, things made of wool, and somebody said, sheep. <laughs> what <the> survey say? <laughs> but the Lord is my shepherd. That's all about my relationship to the law. And the law is what is. The law is what I cannot skirt, no matter how hard I try. That's what makes the law good. Because the law always works in my favor. Always, always, always. The law isn't always nice. But the law is always accurate. The law of cause and effect, the law of mind action, always accurate. And if you want to know where you are with the law, just look around at your life and, and you'll say, oh, I'm resisting. If you're unhappy, if you're not at peace, then you're resisting the law. It's pretty good. So that will show you where your relationship is. Now it says, I shall not want. That comes under the label of provision. I shall not want. When I am living in accordance with the law, I shall not want for anything. I shall have everything that I need, everything that I acquire. Often, my wanting is due to a resistance of the law. My perception of lack is due to my resistance or my unwillingness to experience. Uh, the abundance that life is. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Comfort. The green pastures are the comfort. The sheep are known for, they, uh, they will actually eat down to the grass roots. They will kill their source of food. They'll just stay at that same spot until it's all gone and there's nothing more that's going to grow. Uh, we, there's, there's green pastures for us. How wonderful that is. Uh, he leadeth me beside still waters. Peace. Now the sheep, on the other hand, do, see the sheep don't like a running brook. It scares them. So they will run away from the very thing they need because of the noise. So the shepherd has to make a you know, dam, a bit of it, in order to make a still pond. And so, so that this one won't go running away from the very thing that I need. Ah, uh, let me see. He restoreth my soul, which is healing. Healing. We all have the potential to heal every dis-ease within us if we, if we, when we live in accordance to the law. As Myrtle Fillmore said, neither of us was as healthy as we ought to have been due to a lack of understanding of the health laws. I've said before, many of us are not as prosperous as we ought to be due to a lack of understanding of the, pro of the abundance laws, of the prosperity laws. Many of us are not living as uh, in harmony due to a lack of understanding of the harmony laws. Uh, all, all the good stuff is available all the time. All we have to do is get our understanding in order into this limitless possibility. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness, guidance for his name's sake. And that comes down to purpose. Uh, yea, though I, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is trials, all my trials. And it says here testing, but it, God doesn't test us. The, the law doesn't test us. We keep testing the law to see if I, what we can get away with. Oh, can, can, I, can I forgive everybody but this one person and still prosper and still be at peace and still be justified? So, so you know, those trials, that, 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 uh, that, that, that's, the, that's our valley of the shadow of death. Uh, I will fear no evil. It's our protection. When living within the law, we shall not need any protection because there will not be any danger. I remember talking to one, uh, a person who was, they were very devout to their religion. Very, very devout. And uh, they're, they're a fundamentalist. And 
it was somebody selling his furniture, and he was explaining they do missionary work and they do all sorts of things, and talking about the love of God and the love of Jesus and everything. But it's still okay to, you know, somebody's coming to attack your family to shoot them. You know, war and everything is still killed. And I said, I don't understand. I don't understand. You, uh, you talk about the love of God. You talk about it. I said, it seems to me that if we went with Jesus' law, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and all thy strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself, we're not going to need protection. There's not going to be anybody coming to hurt us. There's not going to be anyone to fear. When my relationship is right with the law, where could there be war? Where could there be lack? Where could there be anything to fight for? I don't need to fear even physical death because there is no end to life. Ah, uh, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, which is my assurance. It's truly my assurance. The shepherds wore a big stick. That was their rod. That could be used as a weapon when predators came. It, it, it could... Keep, the, keep away the predators, actually, uh, for, for the sheep. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, which is deliverance. Now, what could mine enemies be except my thoughts? It's not those other people. It's my thoughts the, about myself. It's not even necessarily my thoughts about them. My thoughts about them are just a reflection of my thoughts about myself. And when I'm busy loathing myself, and I use that word purposely, uh, we, we tend to loathe ourselves. We just hate ourselves. And, and if somehow we think we're, we're somehow separate from the good that is. And we're not. And when I realize that, the self-hatred, the anger, the anger at myself dissipates and dissipates and dissipates. I remember many years ago, in 1989, I went to therapy. And... I remember one day the therapist said, Sean, and we were at 91st Street and uh, Amsterdam Avenue. And you could see all from his apartment, you could see all the way down 8th Avenue to the Statue of Liberty. It was, it was a long journey. And he said, if you could physicalize your anger, what would it do? I said, I could shoot flames from me all the way down 8th <laughs> Avenue to the Statue of Liberty. That's what I could see at that point. I can't see that anymore. I can barely make it across the room with a good flame. You know, it's a good, 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 good flame. It's, uh, it, it, it's impressive when you keep choosing God and keep choosing God and keep choosing God. Keep choosing for what you want rather than what you don't want. It may give us a charge to feel justified and right and that they're doing it to us, but it doesn't last and it's not what I want and it's not what you want. I'm here to tell you at the very least what you don't want and at the very most what you do want. You want the confidence of the law. You want the confidence of the Lord. The Lord and law basically come down to the same thing. They come down to, you want the confidence of what is instead of the insecurity of what is not. It's what you want, go for it. Let's, let's, let's stop pretending here. Then it says, uh, thy, thou prepares the table, yeah, deliverance. Thou anointest my head with oil, which is consecration. My cup runneth over, abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, that's grace, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord, which is security, forever, which is eternity. And so, in this, the beginning of our Say Yes series, and today, today's particular focus is Say Yes to Unlimited Possibilities. This prayer is a prayer of confidence. It is a prayer of assurance that I have what I need and even more. Not only does it have what I need, it has everything I want. It assures me of everything I want and it tells me there's no danger in pursuing it. There's no danger in, in experiencing it. There's no lack for you or anyone else in you having your good and having your fun. That's what I get from this 23rd Psalm, is that limited possibility, or unlimited possibility, exists in all things, in all ways. Now, I want the possibility, unlimited possibility of goodness, because there seems to be there's an unlimited possibility of misery, too. 
that comes through my resistance. This tells me I can put my resistance down. I no longer need the resistance to good. I don't need it. As you know, I have said yes to a lot of stuff in my life because I came to a Unity Church and they told me I could. From the first day, they told me, Sean, you're good and you can't not be good. You can be healthy all the time. You can be wealthy all the time. You can be happy and live in harmony all the time. And I believe them. It doesn't mean I practice it all the time. But I believe them that it is fully possible to do that all the time, to experience it all the time. And they told me I didn't need anyone else to provide it for me. They told me that possibility existed within me and had always existed within me. So you see, I no longer have to wait for my parents to give me a good childhood before I could start on my path of experiencing all the good that exists. I can go ahead and do it now despite my parents. You know, my parents loved me like they could, but uh, they were busy hating themselves. So what were they going to be able to do for me now? Plus, by that time I was in my 30s, what was I going to do with a good childhood? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, I, I had to decide, okay, my childhood was good, but it was not traditionally good. <laughs> so, it, because the only way my childhood could become good at that point, though, was for me to declare, this is good right now. This, where I stand, is good right now. And it's not because somebody else defined it as good. It's because I decide. I decide right now. The only way I can decide that it is good right now is because I am made in the image and likeness of love. I am made in the image and likeness of the reality of being. I am a spiritual being with all of that good and all that potential within me now. Well, if that's the case, then this is good. I didn't have to have any regrets, they told me. I love that. I didn't have to regret one part of my life. I only have a couple of regrets left, and, but those are just minor things, and I can forgive myself for that. I, you know, I wish I had some do-over time. Mm -hmm. I imagine most of us do. You know, and it's only a couple of things. Everything else, I think, has led me perfectly to this moment. A couple of things I still get. Oh, I wish I hadn't said that or done that. But, but that's, that's neither here nor there, quite frankly. Uh, that is so, 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 so much, such minor stuff. But, I was told in unity to say yes. Let your yeses be yes and your noes be no. But say yes to what it is you want. And then find out what it is you want. So you're really saying yes. So it's not about saying yes to a new car. I mean, you can do that, but the new car isn't the issue. What do you think the new car is going to give you? Because that's what you want to say yes to. Yes to a relationship, but what do you think the relationship is going to give you? Because that's what you want to say yes to. Yes, mon money, money's lovely, but what do you think money will give you? Because that's what you want to say yes to. That way we're not confusing cause with effect anymore. Once you say yes to the actual cause, the cause of your life, the cause of your peace, the cause of your joy, the cause of everything, then the universe, this physical life, will take a delightful physical form that will complete the whole picture, but you won't ever be beholden to the car. You won't be afraid of losing the relationship. You won't be afraid of losing money because it's not your ca the cause of your good. It's not the cause of your peace, the cause of your happiness, the cause of your security. You will suddenly realize that there is a divine source, an invisible presence within you that will enable you to realize the source of all good. Read this in Talks on Truth, and I enjoyed it by Charles Fillmore, our co founder. It says, pronounce every experience good. It doesn't say you have to understand how it's good. It just says, pronounce every experience good and of God. And by that mental attitude, you will call forth only the good. What seemed error will disappear, and only the good will remain. This is the law, and no one can break it. The adversary always flees before the mind that is fixed on the pure, the just, and the upright. There is no error in all the universe. 
that can stand for one moment in the presence of the innocent mind. Innocence is its own defense. Or innocence, not stupidity. Not denial. We're talking about innocence. And let's be clear on that. We're not talking about vagueness. We're talking about innocence. So innocence is its own defense. And he who invokes the Father with pure motive and upright heart need not fear any experience. That to me is a confidence builder. That's why I can say yes to unlimited possibility. That this leads to this, and 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 this leads to this. And I don't know. You know, if I, I, I'm guided, take that step, Sean. Say this here. It doesn't say do that and this will happen. It's do this because it's what ought to be done by you. I have been saying that for a lot of years. There was a time I did not want to run a church. I really didn't. I wanted the glamorous act of coming into a church as a guest, giving a delightful, prosperous message, getting my pay, making friends, and I use that term loosely, because I'm about to leave while we all still like each other. <laughs> you know, that's what I saw Edwin do, and I thought that was the coolest thing. You go in, everybody loves you. Oh, aren't they great? Goodbye. <laughs> you all fight amongst yourselves after I leave, but you're all going to think I'm just the best thing ever. It seemed very safe, very nurturing, very protective. And then I heard a voice that said, Sean, you need the experience of running a church. You do think you're the best thing ever. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. But, it's, you know, I, but I heard the voice that said, Sean, you need that experience for your growth. For yours, I didn't know who needed me, who I could help, any of that. I, I just heard the voice. Okay, fine. I'm willing. I'm willing to run a church, but I'm not going to leave David. So it has to be where I can drive from New York City. And uh, was there any? I don't know. If there were any other rules? I wasn't going to end my relationship, though, to do it. And so it had to be commutable. And then all of a sudden, you guys called. There was one other uh, center that want that was interested in me, but I. I I knew I, that wasn't going to happen. I didn't want it, and uh, it, I knew I couldn't help them. And, but then this one called, and there, I came up and tried out, and tried out again. It was a three-time tryout. People had to make their choices. They had to be. I knew it was my job from the first time, time I got the phone call. But I knew people had to have the process of choosing. So many of us, we need our process. And my, my ego saying, oh, I can't they hurry up and choose. Come on, let's get off the stick here, people. And I, I, I had to laugh at some of the experiences through it. I'll share this one with you. That my first first time I tried out, I met with the board and the staff, staff of one. <laughs> uh, and I remember Carol Dubs there. They had just done a, a church growth workshop. And they had seven things that they wanted, you know, how do you see seven things that you see yourself, you know, there was world recognition, there was this, there was that, there was other, it's hanging right on the door there next to us. And Carol said to me, Sean, these are our seven. What are your seven? Thanks, <laughs> And so I turned to them, I said, those same ones. <laughs> you know, they had also asked a couple other things that I knew I didn't want to do. And I said, and if that's what you require, then I'm not your person. Because I thought, I don't want to come in here and make promises that I'm not going to keep. And still they wanted me. And because I said yes. And I've been saying yes to so many things. This year we said yes to a concert. And in 90 days we put on a concert in a thousand seat theater. And we filled 500 of those seats. And we had one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. Next, on Wednesday night, I start a radio show. I've had a dream for at least 10 years to have a radio show called The Good Show with Reverend Sean. And this Wednesday, I start. Wednesday night, local WNLK.com, <laughs> webstream, W, I think it's also WSTC.com. But you can call in. We'll be sending out an email and everything. It's live in Fairfield County, and, but webstreams all over the country. The Good Show with Reverend Sean. I wanted that. I want, I want to know that experience. And so I... Uh, I don't know if I've asked you yet, but I'm hoping you'll be on the second week, by the way. Uh, but let's get clear about the Bible. Uh, we'll talk about it later. But, but uh, I'll say, yeah, man, I, 
I had that down on schedule. I wonder if I asked him. Uh, Ed, Ed, <laughs> Edwin has Say agreed yes, to do it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock. But you know, we keep saying yes. So many of us are afraid to say yes. We're afraid because it might hurt. What if somebody says no to me? You know, I, I wanted, I needed some sponsors to pay for this thing. And I was afraid to ask. And I've asked. And they've all said yes. I only asked three. But <laughs> they've all said yes. And, I mean, one of them is having an entire website designed for me. And it's like, that's not cheap stuff. And I can see what, I saw the mock-up today. It's, it's like, this is nice. People like to help other people. And if they can, they're always going to say yes to you when you ask. If, they, if it's theirs to do, they're going to say yes. Let them give the world an opportunity to say yes to unlimited possibilities. Declare your right place, that you are in your right place at this right perfect time. I am in my right place at this right and perfect time. You declare that to yourself. You declare it to the world through your actions, through your thoughts. What do you want to experience while you're here in this physical body? I'm guessing it's not lack. I'm guessing you don't really want to experience chaos and upset or hoarding. I'm guessing it's not you don't want to experience abuse. I'm guessing you, you don't really want that. And somehow some of us have fallen into a place where we say, oh, I guess this is the best I can have. I guess this is the best that I can have. But unity told me otherwise. Unity told me the best that I could have was the best. So what's the best? You go within and you ask spirit, what's the best for me? What's the best work for me? What's the best play for me? What's the best amount of money for me to have in the bank? What's the best weight for me? What's the best food for me? What's the, I don't ask that often. <laughs> What's the best for me? Keep asking. Keep asking. That divine voice within you, it's your voice. It's your voice of highest consciousness. It's your voice. It is your Christ consciousness that knows everything you need to know to have the most delightful experience you can. So you say yes to unlimited possibility. Yes to unlimited possibility. Yes to unlimited possibility.